Welcome back to Crushing Crisis, the show where I fall in love with my comic collection all over again. We're going to pick up just where we left off in the last episode. I've already unwrapped a uh, bundle of books, and it was actually seven oversized Marvel hardcovers. I did ha three, four of them on the last episode. I'm going to do the other three today. So let's see what we've got. Oh, a wide range of opinions here. Okay. So this is Wolverine, Enemy of the State. Wolverine had a long-running solo series that began in 1988 and was really, I think, as high numbers as we've ever seen an X-Men solo character get into. It was into the 180s before it was canceled in 2003. Let's not say canceled. Pretty much all of the X-Men books went through a change either in 2001 with the advent of the Grant Morrison leather jacket X-Men period, or as Morrison was leaving and Marvel really was trying to do a line revitalization. And so what happened there was that Wolverine series got briefly relaunched as a more mature take on Wolverine, and issues 1 through 19 were written by Greg Rucka, and they were like a very non-costumed, rough-and-tumble Wolverine. And it's a good run, especially if you enjoy Rucka. It's been issued, I believe, in a complete collection, which is great because it was real darn hard to find before that. But then what followed that was this marquee arc with uh, Mark Miller and John Romita Jr. doing Wolverine, Enemy of the State. And Mark Miller, of course, you probably know from him writing Kick-Ass, uh, which has been a movie and also a creator-owned comic book. I don't always love Miller's takes on comic heroes, but this is a pretty great cinematic story. When people talk about like widescreen comic storytelling, Miller, along with Warren Ellis, are two of the authors that really originated that idea in, um, in their runs in the late 90s and early 2000s, and this is very much that. Wolverine, in the first half of this, gets taken over by the Ninjas of the Hand, who you know if you've been watching Netflix's Daredevil. And uh, he's had a lot of run-ins with them. They're as much a villain for him as they are for Daredevil, and they share them uh, between them. And Wolverine, totally controlled by a, a demonic entity, is bad news, as we see again in Aaron's Wolverine in 20... Yeah, 2010, when Wolverine has the Wolverine goes to hell and was also controlled by a demon. It's a trope, and we get it frequently with Wolverine, because it's fun to see him cut loose and just slice stuff up. And so he has a major throwdown, uh, largely with S.H.I.E.L.D. here, and then eventually recovers, and then we get to see the back half of the arc where he kind of puts together the pieces. If you're not a big comic reader, but you are looking for a Wolverine book to read, I would highly suggest this. It's been reprinted a number of times. There's a paperback version. It's in a Mark Miller Wolverine omnibus along with Old Man Logan, which is what the Logan movie was based on. So that's a great buy if you enjoyed the Logan movie, but also want some like costumed Wolverine action too. It's not ultimately my favorite Wolverine story but for exactly that same reason. It kind of feels like dropped in, like, okay, let's have this creator come and do this Wolverine story in a way that actually was decently integrated into the other X-Men books at the time, but didn't really feel organic to the Greg Rucka stuff that had been coming before, which was so adult and not Wolverine costumed. In fact, it would have made a lot more sense if the Rucka run went right to the Old Man Logan story, because they were more similar in tone than the Rucka run to this. But it's still good Wolverine comic books, and especially if you don't really know a lot of Wolverine, it's a fantastic thing to really enjoy, and it's uh, nice and bloody, which is what I hear people like reading Wolverine for. While we're on the topic of Wolverine the Hand, you know, I'm, I was actually really looking forward to pulling out this book, speaking of Rucka, because I'd never opened it before. It's, uh, it's called Electra and Wolverine Redeemer, The Redeemer, by Greg Rucka, and I don't know a single thing about this book. All I know is that it was, I was doing the Electra guide, and uh, I realized that it was something that I didn't have, and I kind of like Electra, and I love Wolverine, and I love Rucka, and so I got it. This is beautiful. So I've heard, actually, from it, and it's prose. That's pretty wild. I've heard, look at that, wow. Um, I've heard, actually, from a reader on Crushing Crisis that this is somewhat apocryphal. Like, it's not necessarily an incontinuity story. It's more like a fable or, a, you know, a storytelling exercise. Wow, this is coming right back upstairs with me to um, to read, because this is really, really beautiful stuff. I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm happy to finally have unearthed it, because I've been thinking about, wow, look at that cover. Nice, um, like a gold buckram with a gold emboss, and Electra's sigh there. That's really cool. 
So good luck finding a copy of this, because it was a little hard to find uh, the first time around. I don't know that it's like actually that sought after. I think it's just rare to find, and so its price can be a little um, inflated because of that. But I don't think it's. I think if you set your eBay alerts and you keep an eye on it long enough, uh, you'll probably find it. This last one, I uh, I kind of break with the pack in my opinion of this one. This is called Shield Architects of Forever. It's by Jonathan Hickman. Most people me included, love Jonathan Hickman. He wrote an amazing Fantastic Four, one of the best, if not the best, Fantastic Four since Stan Lee had been writing it, uh, along with Jack Kirby, who cannot be uh, minimized in that arrangement. And also, Hickman went on to write Avengers all throughout Marvel now and just created a blockbuster Avengers story before just saying, like, bye bye to Marvel and doing his own creator work at Image, all of which is on the shelf actually right here, and is um, pretty much universally terrific. This is the one Hickman thing I don't like. In fact, I hate it. I hate this. It was so hyped when it came out. It's in oversized. I bought it because it was Hickman and because it had um, Dustin Weaver on art, who's a phenomenal artist, and it is not good comic books, in my opinion. And here's what I have to say about that. It's trying to do this, um, oh, this is upside down. <laughs> um, well, we can look at the handsome hardcover here. You can see Hickman's really obsessed with this, like, circles and circles and circles. It's a design motif through many of his books. Um, and look at this, like, fake leatherette. Really nice. Really nice. So it looks great, but it's trying to do this thing where it's like connecting all the way back from Leonardo da Vinci to S.H.I.E.L.D. being this like centuries old uh, club and them trying to protect the earth over the ages. And uh, he, it has a couple problems. One is that Hickman just doesn't stick the landing. Like it kind of just stops and there's supposed to be another series which has still not been completed because supposedly there's a few issues that are still in the scripting stages. Dude, it's 2017, just put out the dang comics. But also because you get the sense that Hickman was maybe planning a wider kind of epic and Marvel at the time that he had started scripting this. And it does, while it doesn't directly tie into his Secret Warriors, it, um, it relates to his Secret Warriors. And then he really focused in on the themes that were in Fantastic Four, and almost all of those themes wound up being also in his Avengers and New Avengers, and it feels like a lot of this stuff got left by the wayside, so a lot of the heat that was behind this at first, because it's like very mysterious, and there's a lot of things that don't really connect, and you're like, ooh, I wonder what's gonna happen, and then nothing happens, because there's just nothing after it, and not just because the next series wasn't released, but because Hickman just didn't bring the themes with him into Avengers. So this has turned out to be kind of an orphan. Uh, if you really, really love Hickman, there's so much great image that you can get before you move on to this. Nightly News, Pax Romana, Red Wing, Red Mask for Mars, um, Transhuman, Black Monday Mur Murders, and of course his lengthy East of West, which is still ongoing at this point, and Manhattan Projects, which is possibly my favorite of his. And did I say secret? I don't know. Oh, here's secret on the other side. So uh, I would say if you've never read indie comics, Hickman, start with, um, start with Nightly News. If you are into media critique and also Fight Club, uh, and I know Fight Club has kind of like an ironic, oh no, not the Fight Club bros aspect to it, but Nightly News is even sort of a commentary on that. It's also sort of like Network, the classic movie. I I'm a big communications nerd, so Network to me is a fave. If that doesn't sound as attractive to you, uh, and you like his kind of like time-bending, universally weird stuff, I would say that any of the next three are really good ones for you. Pax Romana, Red Mask for Mars, and uh, The Red Ring are all really fun ones to read that really play with that whole theme similar to this, especially um, Pax Romana, of the idea of taking our history and presenting sort of an alternate version of it. Hickman at the time actually was illustrating himself, and you can see that he does sort of a combination of prose and illustration, and his illustration is clearly, to a degree, photo reference, but it's also really quite brilliant, and I think he's even coloring himself here, too. It's a really talented guy, and I love when he does this kind of stuff. So, oh, look, and here's, like, the circle motif. Again, he's really into his circles. So maybe I'll do an all-Hickman episode at some point after I reread some of these Hickman books and brush up on them, because I don't necessarily remember them, but basically this is the one Hickman book that I just do not recommend. 
So that was a fun sideline. Now I get to shelve these three books and what an interesting trio they were. Actually, I don't even know if I'm, I mean, I'll ceremonially shelve, ceremonially shelve the electric book, but then it's coming to my bedside table. So, oh wow, we're about to fill up a second block here. This is really exciting. So, there you go. Two whole shelves out of a 20 possible shelves are filled. This has been Crushing Comics. Thanks so much for hanging out with me as I fall in love with my comic collection all over again. Let's get some Moon Knight omnibuses on the shelf, Marvel. Come on, make it happen. Who I am, who I am, who I am.